ready to fly. Pre-flight is complete. So Brent, please uh, take off, put the landing gear in and bring us out. Have you seen the interaction? This is great, isn't it? Okay, so um, one of the problems we always have in uh, space games is to produce a sense of speed. Space is, oh, is big. And the sense of speed is always produced by, you know, small things going around you. So although it's not very visible here, the VFX team has actually added space dust. So in the future you can tell where a ship is going, even, by out, uh, even without looking at instruments. Another thing we're focusing on as well is uh, G-force reactions. Uh, so Brent, if you could jump, come to a stop for a second. When your ship is sitting like that, and you strafe left and right, you have these small head motions. Uh, that basically make your head and your body react to the g-forces they're currently enduring. We're actually increasing them now. We also added rotational g-forces into the mix, so if Brand is now rotating the ship to the left, you also can see that your head is swaying a little bit. Things get a little bit more interesting um, when Brand is actually taking boost into the mix. So if he um, now boosts forwards, we now added a camera shake, we added uh, FOV changes, um, and this all then plays together with the other things like, you know, the other exhaustion effects that we have. So overall, the ship should now feel a little bit more reactive than before. The same thing... Sorry. <laughs> At the same time, we reduce the um, extensions that your uh, that look-ahead code is, does, uh, is doing. So. Um, we basically narrowed it down a little bit so it mixes better with the GeForce reaction so that even when you don't have a head tracker or something like that, it will still feel uh, pretty good. But this is just a minor change. Um, we also improved the flight controls themselves. So take a look at the speed gauge, for example. It's a little bit uh, <laughs> twitchy today. What that speed gauge is telling you, the number that's currently moving, is what kind of speed goal Brand is actually putting in. If he puts his stick all the way forward, the left one, you will now be able to see and read the number that you're asking IFCS to speed and forward uh, momentum. This also allows us to bring back the uh, sticky throttle we had uh, pre 3.5, where now can, if you play with mouse and keyboard, you can press W and S to increase and decrease your speed and let go of the key and the ship will not automatically come to a stop. Of course, this is all completely configurable, so you can enable that or not if you want. Oh. <laughs> Okay, Brian, give me some hot flying now, like uh, blackout and all that. <laughs> okay, so um, another thing we changed in the flight model is that we actually looked at the tricoding exploits. These are really important for PvP and racing uh, players among you, because tricoding gives us a mathematical problem that we're trying to resolve. On some ships, when you tricord, you get actually up to 50% more acceleration. That huge difference uh, actually makes a lot of the ship difference meaningless, so we're cutting back on those. So um, the first implementation of that is already available in the master mode testing areas in 3.21, I think. Um, but we're improving the um, algorithm right now so that it actually is, let, uh, is less punishing um, in future master mode builds. Uh, this is actually a, a current version, so as long as you go roughly forward, you get the full Gs um, from, your, from, your back, from your back engines. OK, so now the biggie in the room. We're talking master modes. Master modes is by far the biggest change we're doing on the ship gameplay. In general, all of your ships will be put into or will get a master mode setup. And the master mode is affecting basically everything surrounding uh, everything on the ship. The ship itself, the, the, the flight model a little bit, but specifically the items and what they do. Um, and there are two master modes we're going to talk today about. One is SCM, which stands for Space Combat Maneuvering, and the other one is Navigation. So let's look into uh, SCM. SEM is the mode that Brent currently has um, has active. So you see the um, Brent. Can you go into the uh, indication, please, for the master mode? Just point with the mouse there, if you can. Yeah. So this is your current master mode. It says SEM. When you you use SEM for basically all the gameplay that is not traversal, so a combat, mining, salvaging, using it for that, you have full access to your combat system. Your shields are working, <laughs> your thruster goose is fully active, your weapons are working. It's the high performance, high alertness mode that you're in. However, we will heavily restrict how fast we can go. Um, we, we can go with your ship. Okay, Brent, go to um, full max speed. 
So this Pladius on max speed in SEM can reach about 225 meters per second. That might seem slow compared to what you have in the pew right now, but it's still pretty fast. However, you can extend that speed. Um, Brent, if you just go forward and boost. So the Gladius can extend up to 500 me 550 meters per second. On this slide here, you can see the speed, gate, uh, the speed spaces we're talking about. So if you're just walk, uh, flying around in SEM, which is like the max speed of your, of your ship, you can reach the 225 meters per second. If you boost, you can reach up to 500 or 550. However, that boost space is not spheric. That means if you boost forward, you reach higher speeds than if you boost backwards. That is really important for space combat maneuvering because, or for dogfighting in general, because it discourages backstrafing. It actively actually punishes backstrafing and it creates more interesting combat maneuvers. Um, the PvP players among you, they basically call this uh, encouragement to closing the gap, which is basically more forward centric combat, which is much, much more exciting than backstrafing and just trying to get some shots on. It also forces you as combat players to uh, to commit to the decisions you did earlier in the fight. So it's going to be, uh, we think it's much more exciting. <laughs> okay. So in short, you pick SCM when you need to fight, when you want to fight, or when you need to fight, right? Um, the thing with the master mode switches is that they do not happen instantly. They take a while to move over. So um, we're now going to put our ship into uh, the second mode, which is navigation. So navigation mode is basically the opposite of SCM. What uh, this does, it gives you a high speed, low performance mode. Your shields, they will collapse. Your weapons will not be able to fire. Your defensive systems will will not be functional, um, but you have higher speeds. So in nav mode, you can still speed uh, reach the speeds of uh, what you have currently in the PU, something, I mean, depending on the ship, sometimes 1,000 meters or 1,400 meters per second. Um, but all your regenerative systems, so regenerating uh, the weapon capacitor, your thruster boost, will be inhibited. So this means when you want to go fast, you need to be very, very careful when you want to swap over. So imagine you're in a fight and you want to escape. You should not do it right away because if you just swap to navigation mode in the hope to flee, you are being left with no shields. And the first thing that will go offline when you are hitting with distortion guns is the quantum drive. And that is important because the quantum drive will spool automatically up when you enter nav mode and it will then unlock the higher speeds. So this means when you're in nav mode and you're fighting, you're very vulnerable, so you should get out as fast as possible. Luckily, <laughs> navigation mode not only allows you a higher speed, but also uh, gives you access to the new quantum travel experience, which we're going to show in a, in a minute. So that is an half point that you see there on screen. This is the uh, point we want to go to in quantum travel to. 